Hello, this is Dr. John Scola, Superintendent. On Wednesday, July 15th, 2020, the board adopted the district's health and safety plan, as well as the reopening plan for the 2020-2021 school year. As with all presentations, we always begin with our mission, which we are committed to excellence in education by nurturing, challenging, and inspiring all students. The Health and Safety Plan Committee was comprised of directors, administrators, our nurse team leader, as well as we had many other um, stakeholders that contributed to this plan, and I want to thank them personally. Also, though, a special thanks to Darlene Klink, the Hanover Education Association president, who I confided in quite regularly throughout this entire process. The formulation of this plan really started on March 13th and continued until July 15th. Included weekly Zoom meetings with LIU superintendents from Franklin, Adams, and York County on COVID-19 um, issues, weekly meetings with the administrative team regarding the feasibility of online instruction, and special attention was paid to staff input given the building administrators regarding student and parent feedback. I would also like to thank the staff for their cooperation throughout this entire process. Weekly meetings with Gloria Sanders, nurse team leader, as well as Mrs. Hilliard, a middle school principal, who's the administrator in charge of the nursing staff with consistent and constant updates on COVID-19. Also, um, we were quite fortunate to continuously read ongoing research or, or on best practices related to COVID-19. Additionally, we conducted two parent surveys to gather stakeholder input. And then Governor Wolf's July 1st, 2020 mask mandate with confirmation that schools are required to follow the governor's orders as communicated by Pedro Rivera, Secretary of Education to superintendents statewide. I also had the pleasure of talking to Dr. Howie, who is the medical director of the York City Bureau of Health. He also reiterated the importance of masks and trying to maintain the six foot distancing parameter. I should note that with any plan, especially with the plan related to COVID-19, there is fluidity of the plan and it can change quite easily depending on the situation and how the virus is spreading. At this point, I'm gonna give you highlights of our health and safety plan and the most important aspects of our plan. First, um, in relationship to cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, and ventilation. Daily cleaning and sanitizing of classrooms, bathrooms, cafeteria, buses, playgrounds, and other touch point areas with hospital grade supplies will be done. All the above will be daily cleaned um, by our custodial staff. Additionally, we've hired extra custodial staff to support enhanced cleaning procedures, which includes cleaning of high touch point areas continuously throughout the day. The ventilations of our buildings to meet or exceed recommended outside air intake. In fact, our ventilations of all our buildings exceeds the recommended outside air intake. We have disconnected all water fountains. Students will be encouraged to bring personal water bottles. Sanitizers are available in all classrooms and students will be directed to sanitize their hands upon entry to all classes. Social distancing and other safety protocols. I must point out whenever I use the word mask, Face shields are interchangeable with masks. Masks will be worn by staff and students when entering or exiting the buildings, entering the cafeteria, traveling in hallways, riding buses, or any time a six foot separation is not possible. Therefore, students may remove their masks when they're seated in the classroom or when eating. Personal protective equipment and classroom sanitizer will be provided to all staff. 
Student desks are arranged in rows, separated by six feet, facing the front of the classroom. There are teaching areas in front of each classroom with at least six to eight feet of separation from the students. There are modified procedures for students entering or exiting the buildings and while traveling to classrooms at other key locations. We will have digital monitor messages as well as vinyl signs posted in key locations in all buildings to help students with social distancing and hygiene requirement reminders. Physical education and other special classes will be encouraged to take place outside when feasible. Staff before the first day of school will receive mandatory training for COVID-19 protocols prior to the start of school. Students will receive training for COVID-19 protocols the first day of class. Parents and students will receive detailed information from the building principals regarding their specific building protocols. We will not be allowing visitors or volunteers in the building unless it is mandatory or unless they have sought prior approval. We will have no off-campus student field trips. We are going to try and reduce the number of students riding buses. However, masks are required if students choose to ride the buses. We were very pleased that up to 40% of parents who responded to our survey are willing to either drive their students to school or have their students walk if they're age appropriate to school in order to alleviate the crowding on any bus. I appreciate your efforts in that regard and your efforts in allowing us to open schools. Plexiglass shields um, were installed at key locations, especially in the office areas and at the cafeteria point of sale. Additionally, we intend to educate staff, students, and parents of COVID-19 symptoms and encourage them to stay home if symptomatic. Students who show symptoms will be seen by our nurse or our health room assistants immediately. The health rooms have, be, have been reconfigured to support isolation of symptomatic students or staff, and staff and students identified with COVID-19 are required to provide a physician's note to return to school. Please note that the Hanover Public School District will follow all Pennsylvania Department of Health recommendations regarding any positive COVID-19 cases. Immunocompromised staff and students will be asked to self-identify if special considerations are necessary. Now our reopening plan proposal that was approved by the board on Wednesday, July 15th. Elementary reopening. We will have a full reopen for all students K through four. Opt-out alternatives are available for all students, including district-driven blended learning instruction or fully asynchronous learning platforms. Middle school, high school reopening. A, B schedule reopening of school for students in grades five through 12. Opt-out alternatives are available for all students, including district-driven blending learning instruction or fully asynchronous learning platforms. Also, with our reopening plan proposal, as I had mentioned earlier, parents are encouraged to transport their students to school or allow them to walk. Anticipated launch date for in-person learning for all students is Friday, August 21st, 2020. The original first day for all students was Thursday, August 20th. However, since we will be unable to host in-person back-to-school nights, orientations for kindergarten, grade 5, and grade 9 will take place on Thursday, August 20th, 2020. Transportation will be provided. Students will attend at their normal start times and will spend two hours at their buildings. 
information will be provided to all students involved with the building orientations by the respective principal. Elementary schedule for reopening. Elementary students, grades K through four, will attend school in the building Monday through Friday following their normal schedule. Online options are available for parents who prefer that their children attend remotely. Students will attend school with their class cohort, including specials, lunch, and recess. Student must wear a mask or a face shield when entering the building. Student entrance will be staggered to allow for social distancing. Students will proceed directly to their classroom if not purchasing breakfast. However, students purchasing breakfast will be served a grab-and-go meal to eat in the classroom. Students will wash, disinfect their hands upon entering the classroom. Student desks are arranged in rows six feet apart facing the front of the classroom. The first row of student desks is positioned six to eight feet from the front of the room, allowing for teacher space. All students will have assigned seats. Masks or face shields are optional in the classroom once seated six feet apart. Students will be dismissed from classrooms one row at a time. Students must wear masks or face shields while traveling throughout the building. Students will travel in straight lines on the right side of the hallway. Teachers will be present in the halls to monitor for social distancing. Signage will indicate social distancing protocols. Students will be seated with their cohort in an assigned seat with social distancing as fe feasible while eating lunch. Students must wear a mask when in line to purchase food. The masks or the face shields may be removed once the students are seated. Students will be dismissed from the cafeteria by cohorts in a staggered manner wearing masks when traveling. For recess, grade level and lunch recess zones have been established to permit distance between classes. Students are not required to wear their mask or face shields while playing during outdoor recess but social distancing should be maintained. Students will be permitted to utilize re recess equipment, but wash their hands upon return to their classrooms. The equipment will be cleaned regularly to mitigate spreading of germs in high touch areas. Students will line up maintaining social distancing practices and put their mask on for travel to the classrooms. It should be noted before I begin the middle school schedule that we feel confident that we can maintain the six foot distancing within the classrooms and all students upon entering the building will remain with their class, which we use the phrase cohort throughout the presentation during the entire day. Middle school schedule. Students will attend school on campus on alternating days. Students will follow either a Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday schedule with alternating Fridays. Students in grades five and six will be assigned to two core teachers and will move as sections throughout the day. Students in grades seven and eight will travel in sections with their homerooms throughout the day. Students will be provided with remote instruction when at home. Lessons will be recorded and can be completed asynchronously. Each grade level will be, will be divided by last name. Every effort will be made to keep families on the same schedule. Students must wear a mask or face shield when entering the building. Students will exit buses along Nighthawk Drive and proceed up the access way to their grade level web door. Students transported by car will walk around the building to enter through their grade level web door. All students will proceed directly to their homerooms after entering the building. Students will be dismissed in a staggered format by grade level 
to facilitate social distancing during dismissal. Please note, with any procedures that are followed at the middle school or high school, our, study, our starting times nor our ending times will not change. In the classroom, student desks are arranged in rows six feet apart facing the front of the classroom. The first row of student desks is positioned six to eight feet from the front of the room, allowing for teacher space. All students will have assigned seats. Masks or face shields are optional in the classroom once the student is seated six feet apart. Students will be dismissed from classes one row at a time. In the hallways, students will distance themselves and must wear their masks or face shields while traveling through the building. Students will always travel in straight lines on the right side of the hallways. Arrows have been placed on the wall to designate the direction for hallway travel. Teachers will be present in the halls to monitor for social distancing. Visits to lockers will be limited. Lockers will be assigned in a staggered format to allow for greater separation. In the cafeteria, students will be seated apart to facilitate social distancing. Students must wear a mask or face shield when in line to purchase food. Masks or face shields may be removed once the students are seated. Students will be dismissed from the cafeteria by the teacher in a staggered manner by tables. Once dismissed from the cafeteria, students must report directly to their next class. A bag breakfast will be served to students each morning and will be eaten in their homerooms. Designated recess break times will take place outside and distancing will be practiced. Zones will be designated for each teacher in class. Special classes are encouraged to take place outside when feasible. Masks or face shields will be required of students if six feet, six foot distancing, excuse me, cannot occur in the special classrooms. Bathroom visits will be limited to three students in the bathroom at one time. Students will sanitize hands as they enter each classroom throughout the day, as well as before entering the cafeteria. High school schedule. Students will attend school on campus on alternating days. Students will fi follow either a Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday schedule with alternating Fridays. Students will be provided with remote instruction when at home. Lessons will be recorded and can be completed asynchronously. Each grade level will be, will be divided by last name. Every effort will be made to keep families on the same schedule. And with that, I should note that we will try make every effort for families that have both middle school and high school students to keep them on the same schedule as well. Students must wear a mask or face shield when entering the building. Students will enter the building from the, from the bus through separate entrances to avoid crowding. Students will provide direct, will, excuse me, will proceed directly to their locker located in front of their home base. Students will be dismissed in a staggered format by grade level to facilitate social distancing during dismissal. As with all schools, student desks are arranged in rows six feet apart facing the front of the room with the six to eight foot safe space for the teachers. All students will have assigned seats. Masks and fa or face shields are optional in the classroom once seated six feet apart. Students will be dismissed from the classrooms one row at a time. In the hallway, students will distance themselves and must wear masks or face shields while traveling through the building. Students will travel in straight lines on the right side of the hallway. And again, arrows will be placed in the high school as they were in the middle school and the elementary schools to designate the direction of the travel. Teachers will be, will be present in the halls to monitor for social distancing and the visits to the lockers will be limited. 
Students will be required to bring material with them for multiple periods. Bathroom visits will be limited to three students in the bathroom at one time. In the cafeteria, students will be seated apart to facilitate social distancing. Students must wear a mask or face shield while in line to purchase food. Masks or face shields may be removed once students are seated. Students will be dismissed from the cafeteria by the teacher or teachers in, in a staggered manner by tables. And once dismissed from the cafeteria, students must report directly to their next class. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Every effort has been made to ensure the health and safety of our students. We understand that as parents, you have a choice of either sending your son or daughter to elementary, full return, or to the middle, or to the high school on an A-B schedule. We certainly respect your choice to opt out as well, since every family decision is a personal decision that is best for your son and daughter. Thank you for your continued cooperation and patience and understanding through the, this COVID-19 process. I would also, if you have any individual questions about your building protocols, please do not hesitate to contact the building principals. Thanks again and have a great summer.